This is Mr. Sato, The Winter's Tale, Acts 4 and 5. Your parents, as they no doubt have pointed out to you, gave you life. Presumably love and support you and do what they can to help you to have a happy and prosperous life. Generally, parents do things that benefit their kids and the kids should be grateful. That's all true. But children bring benefits to their parents as well. The last two acts of The Winter's Tale look at what I think is an important question. Why should parents be grateful to their children? Acts 4 and 5. Actually, now that we've read the entire play, we can look at all five acts. In the play's opening scene, a bohemian courtier calls the child Mamilius an unspeakable comfort, meaning an inexpressible comfort. Camillo replies that the boy makes old hearts fresh and gives old men on crutches a reason to live on in order to see the child grown to manhood. The bohemian courtier replies that if the king had no child, the old men would want to live on until he had one. So what is the benefit to the king? Why is a child such a huge comfort to the previous generation? Unspeakable is a strong word. And how exactly does a new generation make old hearts fresh? Hmm. But Mamilius isn't the only child in this play. There are young adults. What do the other children in the Winter's Tale do for their parents? Look at Polixenes' son, Florizel. Didn't Florizel bring his father together with Leontes to be reconciled? Polixenes is pained when Sicilia and Leontes are mentioned. He tells Camillo, Of that fatal country, Sicilia, speak no more, whose very naming punishes me with the remembrance of that penitent, as thou callest him. The penitent he's referring to is Leontes. If Polixenes can't even think about that painful memory, he isn't about to go visit there, and he hasn't. It's only pursuing his rebellious son that brings him to Leontes' court again. So what is that saying about what children can do for their parents and the conflicts they may have left unresolved? Think about that. Hmm. Now, unlike Florizel, Perdita is ignorant of her parentage. Yet, she still provides her parents with an enormous gift. Remember the oracle's message, The king shall live without an heir, if that which is lost be not found. Perdita is the thing that was lost, obviously. Her name means in Latin, she who was lost. And now that she's restored to the Sicilian court, Leontes and the miraculously restored Hermione have an heir. Okay, now, why does an heir matter? Well, without an heir, the kingdom would not have a clear person to whom the kingdom's leadership will pass. Monarchies generally want the throne to pass down the bloodline. Otherwise, the kingdom could fall into chaos when the king died. Polina does suggest another possibility. The crown will find an heir. Great Alexander left his to the worthiest, so his successor was like to be the best. My Folger notes say that this refers to Alexander the Great, who on his deathbed passed his empire on to, quote, the worthiest, unquote. Who is worthiest? And how do you determine who that is? Civil war is what you'd get. The idea of a monarch passing away without a clear heir was a scary degree of uncertainty to a Renaissance audience. It would be like a president dying in office without clear rules about the line of succession. Without Perdita... Leontes has no successor. Leontes predicted in Act 1, is this nothing? Meaning the so-called evidence of Hermione's infidelity, and it does turn out to be nothing. Why, then the world and all in it's nothing. The covering sky is nothing. Bohemia is nothing. My wife is nothing, nor nothing have these nothings, if this be nothing. I love that speech. Without an heir, all those things are true for Leontes. The world becomes meaningless and empty to him, without a child to live for and to build and defend a kingdom for, and without his wife or his best friend, Polixenes. So all of these things are handed back to Leontes because of Perdita. Like a warm, beautiful spring being born out of the coldest, darkest winter, she gives meaning and value to all the things in his life. Or at a more individual level, on a contemporary level, what happens to the property and memory of a deceased person when there are children to carry on the name? The memory of the parents, their traditions, and biologically, their DNA. Of course, in real life today, there are other ways of being remembered by one's loved ones and by history than having kids. 
But for those who do have kids, they serve a function that no one else satisfies. And so, what is that business about heirs saying about why people should be grateful to their descendants? Hmm. There's another parent-child pair you may have overlooked, the shepherd and his goofball son. After Florizel's masquerade is exposed, Polixenes, who wants to control his son but can't, does that remind you of anyone? He goes a little berserk on the shepherd and his family. The father, and possibly his son too, will be hanged, and the daughter will have her pretty face scarred with briars, thorns. Seriously? It's looking bleak for the three of them, and the shepherd blames his daughter. Oh, cursed wretch, that thou knewst this was the prince and wouldst adventure to mingle faith with him. In other words, you dared to exchange vows with him. Undone, undone. Nothing to be grateful for there. But the shepherd's son, sometimes called the clown, has the idea of revealing the fact that Perdita's a foundling. By showing the fardel, which is a bundle, containing the things they found with Perdita as a baby, they hope to convince the king to spare them, because Perdita isn't the shepherd's biological daughter. Autolycus is the one who facilitates this, but the idea is the shepherd's sons. The shepherd himself has resigned himself to his death. His son's good advice leads to the old man's salvation. Not only is the shepherd not hanged, but apparently nobility is bestowed upon them by association once Perdita's birth parents are revealed. So isn't that another way young people sometimes serve their parents with new ideas and fresh perspectives? Hmm. The only other children belong to Antigonus and Paulina, but we don't learn much about them. There are a lot of issues that we could have talked about in The Winter's Tale. We didn't even talk about the famous statue scene, but this is a good issue. For your three-paragraph response journal question, you'll address the issue of the value children have for their parents. These three paragraphs will demonstrate your comprehension, reflection, and application. Teachers, here's a link to my response journal rubric. You're welcome to use it. The journal question is, in what ways do children deserve gratitude from their parents? If you were raised to be humble and to be dutiful to your parents, this question might make you uncomfortable. But you don't ever have to show it to your folks if you don't want to. And you know, if you're never uncomfortable, you aren't growing. As always, support your answer with evidence from the play that supports your opinion. We talked about four sets of children and parents, and you can write about more than one of them. Answering that on a literal level in the first paragraph shows comprehension. Show that you really understand the relationships between the characters. There's more than one way to answer this question. In the second paragraph, tell what you think or feel about the benefits these children provided to their parents. A good answer will examine your own feelings about it and show you understand it deeply. This paragraph is less about the play as it is about you. This is reflection. In the third paragraph, apply this situation to the real world around you. Apply this situation to the world you live in. Maybe you could talk about your own relationship with your parents, or about adults that you know and their parents. Or you could talk about your whole generation in relation to the previous generation. In this paragraph, you'll get at the heart of the question, which is, how are children of value to their parents? This is what I call application. And if you're interested, here are 10 words from Acts 4 and 5 that are still being used in contemporary English. You can take a screenshot. Do you remember what the shepherd said about young people when he first appeared at the end of Act 3? I would, meaning I wish, there were no age between 10 and 3 and 20, or that youth would sleep out the rest, for there is nothing in the between but getting wenches with child, wronging the ancientry, that means old folks, Stealing, fighting, he says. In other words, that young people between 10 and 23 are nothing but trouble. This play proves him wrong, I think. Over the last 20 years, I've learned never to underestimate the capabilities of young adults. Young people can do really amazing things when they choose to let their lights shine. Personally, I thank my stars that I've had a job in which I can enjoy the company of young people every week. And I hope you enjoyed Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale.